Hey guys, welcome to the vlog. Welcome to another episode here in the studio today, Monday. It's all about music production and I would love to share with you like the secret, maybe not anymore really that secret, but maybe something you haven't heard about, like, like a trick to get more out of your master, a trick to get your song louder without the downsides of getting your sound louder. So all of this coming up today. This right here is my newest project, Watch Me Burn. You just heard it in the intro. It's very close to being finished. And the last step is obviously mastering it, getting it up to loudness. And since I reconstructed the studio, I do the mastering for my own tracks myself and also mastering for other people. The studio isn't fully finished, like the table still needs to be painted, but more on that in the coming days. My master chain at the moment, the one that I developed over the last couple of months, is a little special because it's actually using hardware units as a compressor, equalizer, and limiter at the very end. But everything I'll show you is also possible for you with software. It might even be possible with stock plugins. In my opinion, the hardware units still have like a slight edge, but the, the trick, the principle stays the same. But let me first maybe show you really quick those units. So basically from the DA AD conversion, the sound at the master, the two channels at the end, go through the Better Maker mastering compressor, just slight compression, maybe one or two dB of gain reduction. And then my favorite, the mastering limiter. And honestly, out of all of the stuff I own right here, that's the one unit that I would never ever want to miss again. Since I have it, it's on every single track and it really helps me. And the main thing that actually does that is the built-in clipper. There is a clipper built right into it, which clips the signal, which you might think doesn't make a lot of sense because you don't want to clip. Clipping is what everyone tries to prevent, but it can actually be your best friend and help you to get your songs louder without destroying them, although you're clipping them. So right here in Logic, I got the plugin, the plugin that actually controls this unit, because that's what makes it so special and why I love it so much. On top of everything that it does, it's also controllable through a plugin. So whatever I set in there is set in here. The sound is 100% analog, but it's controlled via the plugin or via the unit, the touchscreen, both ways work. It's recallable, so whenever I switch to another project, like all of the stuff, if you've seen any of my other videos, it's really important to me to keep the workflow up. Like all of the parts in here are recallable. But again, let's like switch to, to the screen so there you can see it a little bit better. And as you can see, we have our input level, just making sure nothing goes above zero. And then there is this clipper right here. It's set to 55%, that's quite high. If we lower it all the way to zero, you can see what it does to your gain reduction on the master. It's reducing the gain by 6 dB, which is already quite a lot. I would never ever do that much with like a single limiter. And you can actually hear it, like listen to the song without the clipper engaged. And it starts pumping. That's what happens if you hit a song too hard against your brick wall limiter. You will get that pumping sound. Sometimes that's wanted, like a hint of it. And sometimes I also like it. In general, you want to avoid that pumping and also making sure your sound doesn't distort. Like a hint of distortion might be something you're going for because it's like part of the style, especially for electronic music. Like this getting things really loud is mostly something people that make electronic music are into and also pop. So let's engage again the clipper and, and see how it changes. Let's go again to around 50%. A lot less gain reduction, a lot less pumping, 
and the clipper is engaged, you can see that there's some debris reduced or actually cut off by the clipper. And here in this case of the better maker limiter, the clipping is actually after the limiting, which sounds different to actually putting the clipper in front of the limiter both ways kind of work. You can try out both, just get a limiter, get a clipper, switch them around, try clipping a tiny bit, try clipping a lot and just hear what happens. I found out for myself having the clipper engaged from like 10% to 50% really helps me to get that desired louder sound without destroying it that much. And what I also really love like on top down here you have um, odd color and even color. So if you think you need more distortion, harmonic distortion, like that vintage analog gritty kind of hint in your song, you can do so. You can choose the drive, the frequency where it should like engage and the amount of it. And I basically set these every single time differently for every single track. So let's maybe again like A and B test it. I will um, engage and disengage the entire limiter and also the odd and even coloring and also the clipper on and off. The odd and even harmonic distortion is of course just like a hint in there. You don't want it to overpower, especially if you put it on the master. But I think it's very obvious that the clipping helps. It helps a ton. Like this is like, it's so easy, it's so simple. Just cutting off transients to push it even harder that it actually opens up the track that much and stops the limiter from pumping that hard. And I know a lot of people will be like, no, clipping, clipping your sound on the master doesn't make any sense. You should never ever clip anything. Here with an analog unit makes a whole lot of sense. In software, it still also helps you to control the dynamics and give you that louder, not pumping kind of sound. At the end, it's 100% up to you, your preference. I think for certain styles, this doesn't make any sense. Classic music, don't even think about it. It's just like, it's nonsense. It needs to be dynamic and there needs to be change and everything. Acoustic versions of songs, music, no, definitely not. But for electronic dance music especially, this is like a magic tool. Also for pop music that is electronic music inspired, magic tool. Like there are so many people using it more and more. For example, Dennis Koju is using it. He was the one recommending it to me. Then Martin Forwork also has it. Both of them I visited in their studios. They had it there, I could test it. And I saw the potential for it, so I also had to get it. I think Nicky Romero has one as well. And David Guetta's Diplos mixing mastering engineer, Pretolazy, he also has one and probably a bunch more. But for electronic dance music on your master, analog limiting, it's fun. It's definitely fun. And if you can't afford it because it's expensive, then try it out in software. Clipper before the limiter, after the limiter. Try changing, shifting around. And maybe one day, hopefully, maybe they will make a software version of it. If they do so, I'll let you know immediately. By the way, if you're interested in a full review, just let me know down below in the comments. Uh, I still need to further test it because there's a lot more to these units, but maybe in a couple of weeks, I will be at a point where I know enough about it that a full video makes sense. But again, try it out. Like after watching this video, try out incorporating a clipper, especially if you make music where loudness is important, especially if it's like bass and kick driven. Makes a whole world of a difference. Watch me That's pretty much it. Another successful day here in the studio. You're of course invited to come by tomorrow again here. Daily vlog, me making music, sharing some tips and tricks. Sometimes some random stuff. For example, this thing right here. 
It's a very bright LED light. Very, very bright. Makes everything look extremely dramatic. But it also has like a different mode. You can switch it to any kind of color. Also really nice. But the very special mode is this one right here. It reacts to my voice. Whenever I say something, it changes colors and blinks. And if I don't say anything, no light. And it's very reactive. I'm very impressed by this. Like, that's what my entire ceiling will be like. It's going to be extremely sick. So tune in just four more days until I get the delivery for the ceiling LEDs.